Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna be checking out the Synology DS423, which is an ARM-based CPU. So let's get started. Now, I do want to thank Synology for sending this over to me for review. Um, this is something I particularly asked them for because they are switching over to ARM and a lot of this stuff on my channel is based off Raspberry Pi or ARM CPU. So I thought it was very interesting to run something like that on this type of device. Now, they have ARM devices before. It's not new. Um, this is the newer version. This is the 4-bay compared to the 2-bay that they used to run ARM on. But yeah, this is geared towards more home users and small, small offices, especially for the types that don't run larger services, if that makes sense. Now, I do have a couple of friends who runs the 1019 plus or the 1520 plus, but all they're using is about 1% of its utilization. Like they only run it for NAS, even though it's powerful enough to run a Plex server or something else in there and uh, utilize the CPU a little bit more. If it was me, I would have probably advised them to use this type of device because it's, it's better suited for what they needed, which is just file sharing. Now, don't get me wrong. It still has DSM 7.2, so you can actually install a lot of stuff in here, especially since it's ARM. You can install Portainer and also the Pi hosted template. So you have up to 200 plus containers that you could choose from if you want to install something else like uh, you know torrenting or plex or jellyfin or whatever you want you can still install into this using the portainer template that i have on pi hosted now to get started to talk about the device this is running a realtek uh, cpu uh, which i'll leave the model right over here i think it's a 1618b it has two gigs of ram fixed so you can't add more ram it doesn't have any drives to slide out or in you do have to remove the cover the removing the cover is super easy there's four thumb bolts that you could just unscrew uh, knock down the back panel and then lift up the top and all of a sudden you have access to all four drives nothing much interesting going on inside since you can't upgrade the ram or anything else and they don't have nvme drives you're you're pretty much just installing hard drives at this point and also check this out synology actually now have drives that you can purchase so if you are buying this directly from synology you could either ask them to include drives or you could buy their drive directly. So that gives us a little bit more option instead of sticking with either Western Digital or Seagate, we have another option now, which is Synology drives. Now in the back of the Synology, you do have your power input. Then you have two gigabit ethernet ports and two USB 3 ports. In the front, all you have is a power button. That's about it. Overall, these are using very small fans, not like the standard models that they have. So it's actually extremely quiet. I think about 23 dB. It is a little bit smaller than their conventional style of uh, Synology NAS is that you're used to seeing, you know, the ones with the doors in front. Yeah, I, I thought it was a very interesting approach. Anyway, let's jump to the desktop. All right, so here we are at the DSM dashboard and you do get to sign in this time. It's slightly different from DSM 7.1. Uh, the 7.2 actually makes you go through this process and then type in the password again. It works. It's pretty cool, actually. Now, I do have a couple of things installed in here, which I'll go through, but mainly um, I'm actually very interested into this dashboard actually working very well on ARM64 CPU. Now you do get the same uh, stuff that you do on the standard DSM 7.2 on the Intel models, but there are a couple of softwares that are in the Intel models that are not actually in the ARM64 versions, but not, not a lot, just a few like uh, virtualization station and uh, a lot of active stuff like active backup or active copy or whatever it was. They're not on here, but the majority of the packages, they're still here. So if you're looking for anything that uh, was actually created by Synology, like the surveillance station, it's in here. Synology chat server, stuff like that. It's all in here other than the, I guess the third party product because active is a third party product. Um, I did install containers manager, which allows me to install dockers, which will allow me to install portainer, which will allow us to use my Pi hosted template, which allows us to install a lot more stuff. So anyway, I'll get into that in a sec, but let's jump into um, control panel and we're going to take a look at the info center. And as you can see, I actually named this tiny NAS. We're using DSM 7.2-64570. Um, the serial number here, we have DS423, and again, it's Realtek RDT 1619B, 1.7 gigahertz, four cores, and fixed two gigs of RAM. Uh, that's about it as far as the info goes. There is two networks, I'm only using one out of the two. Uh, Storage-wise, I am using two of the Synology four terabyte hard drives that they gave me, and I'm using it as in striped which is um, I combine them together to make a larger pool. So I do have about seven terabytes of data. Um, services goes, this is where you could actually install you know, or see what's going on with all the services. Like I do have container manager and a few ports over there. 
and that is about it I mean you still get the standard stuff if you need to uh, join an LDAP or whatnot it is still basically everything you would find on a standard Intel version of DSM but I wish somebody would port this over to ARM64 so we could actually install it onto our Raspberry Pi which would be really really cool but that's just my thought now heading over to our container manager you could see that I'm actually running three images so I have my containers, I have Portainer, Plex, and Jellyfin. Obviously, I had to install those to test. And there's a few other things that you could do. You could go through registry and kind of pick and choose what you want. But I would jump straight into going into Portainer. In Portainer itself, if you head over to settings, uh, on the app template, you could actually add my Pi hosted master template with the Portainer ARM64 version, which allows you to get almost 200 containers in here that I know works for ARM64. Now, when I first started, it was only 100 images. Now we're up to 200. That's only been about a year or maybe two. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. We got guacamole, uh, home assistant, home bridge, like tons of stuff that you could install from here. And I know it works on ARM64 because I got a lot of this working on Raspberry Pi. So what I did install, again, I'm just gonna repeat, which is Plex and Portainer. I mean, Plex and Jellyfin. And I did install it through Portainer because it's just so much easier with the one click. And then I'm gonna show you a little bit of a demo. So here we have my um, Elugu video from last week. I did turn off the volume and this is on direct play. Now on direct play, it actually doesn't use much CPU usage. It actually drops down lower as soon as the file finished transferring. So it'll stay around like, 20 ish percent and then drop down to one and then if it needs more it'll go up a little bit but ultimately it does work right here's the problem since we don't have gpu transcoding a hardware acceleration for this uh say i go into do uh 724 megabits this is where it struggles it's gonna pull your cpu usage really high like 80 to 85 percent trying to transcode this one video um and it it's not even fast like i'm still waiting for the video to process through and it's still transcoding. Like if I transfer over now, you're gonna see, look, 85%, might jump up to 86 or 80, like it, it bounces around 80%. And then finally, it'll start to play as soon as it gets buffered enough. So direct play from DSM423 is almost a must have. You're trying to transcode, again, you can, but you can't feed many people. It's only one person. Your CPU is not strong enough to do multiple people. Now I'm gonna stop this right over here. And we're going to check out Jellyfin because I have the same video. It's actually in the same uh, folder structure. So if I hit over here and hit play on direct play, again, it works flawlessly. It'll drop back down to like, actually, I think um, Jellyfin uses a lot more CPU usage than uh, Plex. Plex is actually a lot more lightweight, to be honest. I didn't even know about this until I started comparing it uh, side by side. But yeah, like right now, I'm only using about like, two to 10% of CPU usage to transfer the data over because I'm doing a direct play. But if I was to switch this over to, uh, where is this? Quality, and let's do 724 megabits. Same, same transcoding as we did with Plex, but it uses so much more CPU, it pins it to 100%. It might be even going higher than that, but I can't tell. It's just 100%, and it is transcoding. It does take a little bit, it does get through, but FFmpeg, I think, uses a lot more resources than whatever Plex proprietary uh, transcoder software uses. So we are seeing a lot more usage out of using Jellyfin. So yeah, if you guys are playing around with this, and not planning to host a lot of services, this is a very good option because it's more towards the smaller usage like home use or small office. This does work very well, especially the fact that you can install Docker's just to get some services out of the way. So in conclusion, it all depends who this NAS is for. If you're home or small business, I say go for it. It's actually a pretty good NAS because a lot of them don't use the percentage that we would use, like running virtual machines or running surveillance systems and stuff like that. Even though it can do some of that stuff, if you're not gonna be using that, I would definitely recommend this to that type of setup. But obviously, if you are a small office, but a little bit bigger, maybe 10 people, 15 people, you're running through all the stuff, you need to run specific services, maybe run an LDAP off there, uh, print services, whatever. It's something that requires more CPU usage, then I would go for the higher DS1015 or DS1022 or 1522 or whatever the latest numbers are right now, instead of running the DS423, which is the ARM CPU. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this or want me to try anything with the ARM CPU, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then I say my Nerd Cave, 
hack till it hurts.